right, man. We got us a Sunny V2 video. It says Coco Melon, the most evil channel on YouTube. Let's check it out. My son is almost two and I've been letting him watch Cocomelon, but now I had to get him speech therapy so I can get him to talk. There are hundreds oh. and hundreds of anecdotes in which parents mention the exact same problem. My two year old is speech delayed and addicted to Cocomelon and switched to Miss Rachel two days ago and he's already saying more words. He hasn't had any tantrums. What? The Cocomelon show is so insanely addictive, it's being compared to nicotine and causing developmental issues amongst the kids who can't stop. 7.7 .7 times more likely to show symptoms of ADHD. No way. Watching. Children's TV expert Jerrica Sands calls it the most damaging show a child can watch, explaining the sneaky ways in which they make the show addictive. Firstly, there's the colors. Take, for example, the wheels on the bus. The three main colors, blue, green, and yellow, are all at maximum saturation, meaning they cannot be made any brighter, no matter how hard you try. Extreme saturation is normally used for alerts and notifications, as it's exciting, dynamic, and attracts That's attention, which is why it's also oh, used yeah, in slot casino. machines. Yeah. Cocomelon puts these colors in perfect contrast, making them appear even more vibrant, which is different to, for example, bluey, bluey. in which the colors instead blend together. Cocomelon's also different because it's highly repetitive. There's a reason they have 38 videos with over a billion views. A child's brain is wired to learn through repetition, <laughs> so it feels right to them to watch the same thing over. Um, you remember how like two, what was it, like two or three years ago? PewDiePie made a song called, like, Fuck Coco Melon or something like that. And they wiped it from the fucking platform. They took they took PewDiePie's video down and they removed everybody's video that, uh, that reacted to it. They didn't give us strikes, but they took it down. They was like, yeah, this is, this is not good or so, some shit like that. But that's crazy how this shit all pans out, bro. See how YouTube protects just it, randomly, bro. Over and over again. Cocomelon abuses this in almost every video. For example, in the Yes Yes Playground song, they pick a word to repeat three times in every sentence. Yes, yes, yes. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Pairing it with a subtly repeating background lullaby, keeping children hooked. Literally, no show or movie puts my son into a deep trance the way Coco Melon does. The second it's on the TV, he turns into a toddler zombie who doesn't see or hear anything else that's going on in the room. This is only exacerbated by Coco Melon's subtitles, which have also been a heavy point of criticism. The letters are not educational. I can barely read them fast enough. It's simply another interesting element to capture your little one's attention. No Coco Melon explains in every description, our goal is to help make learning a fun and enjoyable experience for kids, giving you the peace of mind that your children are receiving quality educational content. But people have argued that they're teaching exactly what children shouldn't do. For example, in the No No Bedtime song, the baby refuses to brush his teeth, have a bath, put on pajamas, or get in bed. The education is that he eventually agrees to do so, yet a TikTok user was critical, stating, anytime I'd ask my son to do a simple task, he'd say no, no, no. He's sitting there watching Coco Melon, which taught him no, 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 and to say no oh. to me. On the topic- Oh, yeah, that's not good. I didn't- You see, yo, you never really know, because, like, why on earth would you, like, even though, like, you know, it's supposed to eventually they do it. Kids that are two and three can't grasp that that's a learning experience. You learn from that, and you know what I'm saying? Or that's the lesson in this. They can't grasp that this is a lesson. They just, it's like, like, you can't expect a three-year-old to see, oh, see that, oh, eventually they did it. So that's what I'll do. I'll do it eventually. No, they just see that the person said no, 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 and that's fine. It literally teaches them to be disrespectful to their parents. That's crazy. Topic of education, Jerrica Sand stated, these people don't give a shit about our children. They care about money. That's it. Your child's cognitive development in direct exchange for their wealth, and there's pretty good evidence supporting this. A New York Times journalist visited Coco Melon's studio. A kid's show juggernaut that leaves nothing to chance. Fine tunes the world's most popular video programs for youngest of viewers. Parents already know 
that resistance is futile. Worth discovering their number one focus is keeping children hooked. Coco Melon's data and analytics team sifts constantly through YouTube numbers to determine exactly what resonates. Should a girl wear black jeans or blue jeans? Should the music be louder or softer? Should the bus be yellow or red? Yellow is the answer wow. as they use a darker method to ensure that they're correct. Wow. Coco Melon has a dedicated Distractatron room in which once a month children are brought here one at a time and shown a handful of episodes to figure out exactly which parts of the shows are engaging and which are tuned out. Next to the TV playing Coco Melon, there's a second screen which plays a continuous loop of banal real world scenes. A guy pouring a cup of coffee, someone getting a haircut, each lasting about 20 seconds. Whenever a youngster looks away from the Moonbug show to glimpse the Distractatron, a note is jotted down. We can see what they're looking at and the exact moment when they got distracted. Therefore, education clearly isn't the primary goal. Hell no. What the fuck kind of experiment is that? So you're noting when they look away, like, oh, we need to change that so they don't look away. The fuck? To two, three, and f like five year old, what are we doing? This is why fucking kids are zombies. The kids are zombies. They calling out. The parents calling out to them and shit. And they can't look. They physically can't look away because the video was tailored to them for them to keep their attention on the TV. The brain rot starts early, chat. Goal. Keeping kids' attention is, and this is proven by Coco Melon's most addictive element, rapid camera cutting. It's crazy how many times the frame changes on Coco Melon. It's the same type of addicting behavior that we experience on a TikTok binge. It's the quick change of frame that releases that dopamine and makes the videos addicting to watch. Count the seconds between a change of frame. Well, TikToker the circus brain did exactly this. No he firstly counts the changes on My Little Pony, concluding there's about six seconds seconds between each cut. He then compares it to Cocomelon. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. Wow. Two, one. One. In her video, The Nightmare That Is Coco Melon, wow. Semantics draws a similar conclusion. She found that 96% of the shots in Baby Shark were shorter than two seconds. She then compares four different animated shows, again finding Coco Melon has the shorter shots. The longest shot on a Coco Melon video was six seconds. The longest shot on Arcane was eight seconds. The longest shot on Bluey was 27 seconds. And the longest shot on Encanto was 18 seconds. Which Holy when combined shit. with every other element, Element, create some terrifying statistics. Dr. Kristen Summer explained that when showing an infant normal video content, they'll focus on the screen just 11% of the time. However, when the video is instead switched to Coco Melon, their screen engagement skyrockets to a whopping 74%. This therefore produces stories such as this. I used to volunteer for a preschool and they had song time. A Coco Melon video came on and all of the tots stopped what they were doing, put down their chair these crackers and remain fixated on the screen for the duration of the video. Like it was honestly zombies. kind of terrifying. YouTuber Sabersbark shared his own personal anecdote. He asked to watch a Disney movie with his two younger cousins, who both completely refused and instead spent all day glued to an iPad playing the addictive show. In Coco Melon Made My Kid a Zombie, a mother talks about her son. He would be in a daze while watching it. You could be waving your hand right in front of his face and he wouldn't move. Oh, hell it was no. scary. This was also discovered by Sarah Mills 98, who explained when the Coco Melon when a coca Mill addiction is so real that my one-year-old can navigate the TV on to it by himself. Absolutely. No, that's fucking insane. One. One. Melon addiction is so real that my one-year-old can navigate the TV to turn it on by himself. However, nothing shows the addiction better than the Coco Melon TikTok trend. I remember that. I literally remember that, bro. Like when they was when they would hear the fucking startup, they come bolting, bolting to see it on the TV. Is the addiction better Look. than the Coco Melon TikTok trend? Parents will play the show's intro loudly and video their kids sprinting toward the television, Look. where you can witness their mood change instantly. The New York Times journalist found something similar. The kid in the Distractatron had shown up in the midst of a tantrum, which ended the second he heard the Coco Melon theme song. 
It was no surprise to Wheeler, the head of research. 99% of kids, he said, if they're having issues when they get here, once that Cocomelon song comes on, they're like, ah, life is okay. All is good with the world. Obviously, crazy. there's a reason for this. Cocomelon is so hyperstimulating that it actually acts as a drug and what happens when you take the drug away. Oh. Young children experiencing symptoms of that, oh my god, so they're technically going through withdrawal and they're like antsy and aggravated until th that's insane. That's insane. Because it, you, yo, they're such young minds, they get stimulated so easy when you take away that stimulation after they've had so much of it, it's damn near an addiction. Holy fuck. Little kids is literally fighting addiction when they're not watching Coco Melon. Holy fuck. ...of addiction and withdrawal, obviously leaving them completely dysregulated. TikTok user ThePoff1 filmed what happens when you take the show away, explaining he'll be inconsolable for at least 10 to 15 minutes after, adding in the description, Coco Melon Meltdown is legit. Once you have a taste of the cocoa, it's hard to break the addiction, Holy which shit. this Reddit user had experienced even worse. My husband and I have been worried about our child. I can slowly see how she'd throw violent tantrums at home and in church whenever she'd get bored and would want to watch the show. Her behavior changes the moment she watches the show and she will not even eat her meals if she wouldn't watch it. Wow. After these tantrums end, kids can experience a general discomfort in the speed of everyday life. The more they watch the show, the more their brain begins to expect this intense level of stimulation. Basically, Coco Melon overstimulates their brains so much that everything else just seems slow and boring in comparison. However, Holy the shit. potential consequences get much worse than this. As mentioned at the start, it was the cause of a child's speech problems with a notable reply reading same thing happened with my daughter too she's four but can't speak properly she knows the words but she does not like to frame the sentence or speech she has been watching these coco melons or such other stuffs for two or three years hope we're not too late over on reddit a speech language pathologist explained screen time in general is linked with speech delays for a variety of reasons but coco melon is excessively bad firstly unlike other tv shows or movies it doesn't, doesn't have, have a story. Oh. It's just very short clips with poorly written songs. The kids aren't able to follow the plot, learn vocabulary, and see the resolution of a conflict supported by infant specialist Meg Fora. And the problem with fast-paced TV programs is that we find that little one's language development is slower. On the Agents of Speech YouTube channel, this is again confirmed. The main problem with watching videos on the internet is that they don't know how to use the language that they learn. But he adds that four to five hours of screen time per day can make a toddler completely non-verbal. Four to five hours is obviously a lot of time, but in Coco Melon Made My Kid a Zombie, researchers discovered that five-year-olds who watch more than two hours of TV a day tended to have lower attention spans and were 7.7 times more likely to show symptoms of ADHD. These screen times might be even lower for Coco Melon specifically because, as explained by Jerrica Sands, not all screen time is created equal. A child who just watched 30 minutes of Coco Melon and and a child who just watched 30 minutes of Trash Truck will look like a very, very different child. Thankfully, oh. here lies a simple solution. Sierra Renee explained my two-year-old is speech delayed and addicted to Coco Melon. Switched to Miss Rachel two days ago, and he's already saying more words and hasn't had any tantrums. Kim.it shared an almost identical anecdote. My eight-month-old was obsessed with Coco Melon and having bad taste, so I canceled and slid to watch Miss Rachel. She said her first word within the first three days. Yeah. First of all, shout out, uh, shout out Miss Rachel, man. Shout out Miss Rachel. Shout out Miss Rachel. The kids love Miss Rachel, bro. I ain't gonna lie. And she seemed like she, like, she, she really be teaching the kids stuff. My eight month old was obsessed with Coco Melon and having bad tantrums, so I cancelled Coco Melon and only let her watch Miss Rachel, and she said her first word within the first three days of watching. Clearly, parents are able to simply change the channel, but not before leaving Coco Melon a massive amount of dislikes. Damn. They've therefore earned the title The Absurdly Popular Kid Show Parents Hate, and Coco Melon has actually responded to the criticism that explain our shows are not intended to replace outdoor playtime or playdates. They have a play Place in children's entertainment time, and as with food, exercise, etc., it comes down to each parent to oh, find the so right. Here, the they, here they go. Hey man, we just put out the show. 
It's it's up. Y'all gotta balance the time. Y'all kids watch it. Our, our quality of content that we to produce. Get the yeah. Here we go. Cop of the fucking plea, bruh. Appropriate balance for their children. Our responsibility is ensuring that the quality of the content that we produce is high. Yeah, trying to find trying to find the right balance, but then also finding when oh, but when the kids look away, we gotta make sure they look back. What are we really talking about? They aren't wrong. They aren't wrong. The the parents should definitely monitor the kids' screen time, but you're also making it harder by making the shit addictive so the kids like say you give the kids 30 minutes of fucking Coco Melon. The kid doesn't want to look away because they've been so fucking hardwired and you've hardwired the show for them to look away that when they do pull that shit away, they're fucking having tantrums. So how the fuck is they supposed to only manage to show them 20 to 10 minutes of Coco Melon when, when they fucking cut it off, they have intentions because you make the show addicting. Get the fuck out of here. High and beneficial uh, for the development of a child's cognitive and soft skills. It is worth adding that our social media communities are filled with stories of parents who experience firsthand how Moonbug content helps their children. Cocomelon does have a crazy amount of supporters, but it's obvious that some of them are simply ignoring the downsides. My baby learned the alphabet and numbers from Cocomelon. There's no way, there's no way she typed this out, right? She may not speak a complete sentence, but she expresses her wants through phrase. There's no way, right? Are you fucking dumb? Yeah, my baby learned the alphabet and numbers. And yet, yeah, she might not be able to speak, you know, full sentences and shit, but... Hey, she can kind of tell me what she wants. How the fuck is that a good thing? How is that a good thing at all? But is a Coco Melon's responsibility to ensure that babies are talking? Well, no. People love blaming cartoons and games for raising children, and not the shitty parents that don't step in to stop them from watching so much. Coco Melon is actually a really sad symbol of parents giving their children tablets instead of actually parenting and interacting with them. Ultimately, parents are the people who choose how much their child consume. True. True. But that shit don't make it no easier, man. It's like, at the end of the day, it's like, yeah. It's, it's also like the same thing with, like, fast food. Just because niggas can choose not to eat fast food doesn't mean we should allow shit. The shit in our food that we be getting, the processed ass food. Could you just stop eating the food for sure? But why is it so easily accessible? And addicting. They make it easily accessible and addicting. And it's cheap. We gotta sometimes like, yeah, it's the parents' fault and it's people's fault they over... But also sometimes you gotta blame these corporations. They sh It shouldn't be this hard to get access to, to, to healthy food. It shouldn't be more expensive. It shouldn't be... Just like it shouldn't be that hard... So for your kid to sit down and watch a show for 30 minutes and not be fucking addicted to it to where they throw in tantrums. Because to be honest, y'all be like, niggas is like, oh, uh, your, your, your baby is watching this and that. Your baby shouldn't even be having screen time. Let's be fucking for real. Before there was iPads, what was there? TVs. What was the kids watching? Sesame Street, Blue's Clues. So it's not like screen time is... Anything fucking new. It's just they want to blame it on iPads. It's the same shit. It's the same shit. Let's really be. Let's let's not fucking act like the iPad is a new pandemic. Yeah, it's more easy. It's easier for sure. But you just also got to understand, like, we it's both sides, bro. It's both sides.